Hey, you interested in compression or normalization and you're confused about which one and why and when and where? Today we talk about those two things and what's the difference between them. Happy Friday to you, I'm glad you tuned into this channel. If you're new around here, I talk about audio, specifically audio for video, as well as filmmaking in general and composing and all things creative. And if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So today I wanted to talk about compressors versus normalizers, compression versus normalization. There is a lot of confusion in the audio world and the video world about those two tools, why to use them, and in fact, when to use them, and what's the difference between the two. So we'll jump right into that and just start with a compressor. We've covered this before on this channel. What is a compressor? Well, it added its highest level, it's a dynamics processor. It changes the dynamic range of audio. What that means in layman's terms is it takes the highs of an audio signal and the lows and it makes them closer together, effectively evening out the signal so that you don't have spikes and troughs where it's gonna dip it where the signal will dip in and out of your mix. It evens out the amplitude or the loudness of the signal, making it all smash together so that it's right at the front of your mix so you can hear it more smoothly, more cleanly, more nicely. This is a really attractive tool. A lot of people use it for dialogue. In fact, I think it's absolutely critical for dialogue, especially when you're mixing your dialogue with music or sound effects or literally anything. You want to compress that dialogue so that the spikes in the audio, which are natural, are pulled back. And then the quiet parts of our dialogue are boosted up. That's what a compressor does at its, at, in its essence, that's what a compressor does. And there's a bunch of different parameters to that tool. If you wanna know more about compressors, click up here and watch my course on compressors that was a little more in depth last Christmas. And in fact, watch that whole audio tools course. And in fact, I'm gonna be making a really in depth course on how to use Adobe Audition soon. So check out, watch out, check that out when it comes, watch out for that. Now, how is that different than normalization? Normalization is very similar in the fact that it acts on the amplitude of the audio. Another way to talk about amplitude is loudness or volume or gain. Those are all words interchangeably used in different parts of the signal chain for audio. A normalization process takes the audio and just moves it up or moves it down. It is basically like, you can think of normalization as a volume knob. It is turning everything up or everything back down. A compressor, let's revisit that real quickly, it decreases the dynamic range. So like if my hand here, here's the low, here's the lowest point in your audio signal, here's the highest point, a compressor is going to squash it. A normalizer is gonna take that signal, it's not gonna touch the dynamic range and it's just gonna move it up or move it down based on the thresholds that you set. So you can think of compression, flattening out the amplitude, then a normalizer is just gonna change the overall loudness by turning the volume up or down. Does that make any sense? Hit like if that makes any sense. Now one last time, the key difference between a compressor and a normalizer is that a compressor decreases the dynamic range. A normalizer doesn't touch the dynamic range, it just affects the overall volume or the overall loudness of the signal as it is. A normalizer does not even things out, that's what a compressor does. A normalizer just moves it up or moves it down. So a compressor is used to decrease the dynamic range for the end goal of making your audio more consistent in loudness over time. More consistent in the amplitude. So the highs are lower, the lows are higher. Consistent amplitude. A normalizer, on the other hand, just turns it up and turns it down. Why would you wanna use a normalizer? Well, this is about average loudness. This is about taking the entire mix, your entire video mix, or your entire audio mix, if you're just doing audio, and changing the average loudness. Like I said, like a volume knob, turning it up or back down. So, you can use normalization when you're exporting out of Premiere and just say, hey, hit negative 24 LUFS, or hit negative 18 LUFS. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna take your mix as it is, not gonna touch the dynamics of your mix. It's just gonna move it so that the average loudness is at those designated thresholds. The only reason you would wanna do this is if you are trying to hit a target loudness. For example, if you're going to broadcast, there are specific standards for broadcast in normalization. That's why when you hear something on the TV, it has been normalized to be an average loudness over time. It's not squashing that signal, it's just changing the volume of it so that it hits an average. Does that make any sense? Now here's just why I wanted to make this video. I see so often people talking about normalization and what they mean is compression. They're saying, hey, you should normalize that signal, meaning even it out. But that's not what a normalizer does. Normalization turns it up and turns it down. You need a compressor to even it out. Or a multiband compressor, which is just a type of compressor. So I'll give you some, some audible examples here of compression versus normalization where they're gonna be the same kind of loudness but compression is gonna sound more squash and normalization is just gonna change the loudness of things. So I'll give you some, some audible examples here of compression 
versus normalization. So I'll give you some, some audible examples here of compression versus normalization. So I'll give you some, some audible examples here of compression versus normalization. So I'll give you some, some audible examples here of compression versus normalization. So I'll give you some, some audible examples here of compression versus normalization. At the highest level, to recap, a compressor is a dynamics tool. It decreases the dynamic range of your audio amplitude. And a normalizer is a constant gain loudness tool, moving the loudness up or down like a volume knob. It does not touch your dynamic range. Simple enough? Well, that's all for this week. Let me know what you thought. If you learned anything from this or if you didn't and you didn't learn anything, just let me know in the comments. I love interacting with you all on the keyboards. Be sure and share the channel with your friends. I love interacting with you all and I definitely want to grow this year. So with all that being said, I'll see you next week.